goal of this tutorial is to demonstrate how you can use overlap with character rigs. I will rig this robot's arms using forward kinematics and then use inverse kinematics for the antenna. I will then create overlapping action and follow through using overlap. To begin, I'm going to go to my first frame. I'm going to hide the antenna for now and I'll choose my puppet pin tool. I'll select the front arm graphic and I'll start creating puppet pins. I'm going to create one at the joints, so I'll start with the shoulder. Next I'll do the elbow, then the wrist, and then a final one for the hand. I'm then going to select my back arm and do the same thing. I'll create a pin at the shoulder, one at the elbow, one at the wrist, and one at the end of the hand. Okay, now I'm going to rename each one of these puppet pins. For the front arm, I'm going to call these F underscore for front arm, and then hand, then F underscore wrist, F underscore elbow, and finally F underscore shoulder. Now let's do the back arm. I'll call this one B underscore for back arm, hand, B underscore wrist, B underscore elbow, and then B underscore shoulder. Okay, I'm going to be using this script Dweek to create my uh, null objects that I'm going to use for the arm swing. It's, uh, the null objects are controllers for each one of these puppet pins. So for example, if I was to click on the front hand here and then click on bones, Dweek places a null object at the same location that I can then use to manipulate my arm. So I'll undo that and I'm going to create a bone for each one of these puppet pins. So let me get the shoulder there. Okay, my front arm is done. I'm going to then go to my back arm and create bones for it. Okay, now if I go up to the top of my layers here, I'm going to drag my back arm controls beneath my front arm controls. And then I would like to uh, parent these appropriately. So the hand should be a child of the wrist. The wrist should be a child of the elbow. And then the elbow, a child of the shoulder. I'm gonna do that for both arms. Make the elbow child of the shoulder. Okay, good. Now I want to drag these arms into location. Oops, I scaled it. Uh, about there is good. And I'll do the same for the back arm. Since this is profile view, I can put these in the same location. Okay, and now I'm going to make both of these shoulders children of this head layer, which is the whole like sphere of my robot character. And if I were to scrub ahead, you can see that those arms and all their bones are moving along with the character. That's great. Now I'm going to create arm swings. I'll open up my front shoulders rotation property here. And this is my contact pose of my walk. I want to swing this arm forward, say about minus 45. This will be the extreme for the uh, shoulder. And I'm gonna create a keyframe. I'm gonna go to my next contact pose, which if I move the current time indicator forward, it's at 16. 
I will do the opposite of this. So call that 45. All right, now I'm going to create overlap for all of these bones. I'm gonna select the shoulder, then the wrist, or sorry, then the elbow, then the wrist, then the hand, and then I'll click on overlap. And because I have this rotation animation on this driver layer here, it sees this as my shared property that I want to overlap. And it's also a shared property because every one of these layers has that property. So just a good thing to remember about overlap. If I open up my preferences, I'm going to want to add offset control and then to recolor these layer uh, labels. So since these bones are on the left-hand side, as is standard with character rigs, I'm going to make this a blue driver and then I'll make the driven layers a cyan. And now that's done, I'll click on OK. So if I scrub to frame zero, you can see it's different now. Now it's not this stiff, straight arm. It's got this progressive rotation bend here, which is happening with delay, and it creates a nice overlap and then a nice follow through there. However, this elbow and wrist, they're kind of bending unnaturally. So I want to create an offset on my driver layer that will correct that. So I'm going to go to this back extreme pose here and create a rotation offset uh, keyframe. So I just went to my driver layer and then in the effects controls, I'm uh, creating a keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch. Now I'm gonna click on the layer and then press my U key to bring up the keyframes. I wanna also create a keyframe at frame zero. So I'll come here and I'm going to just pull this forward a bit, about there is good, and then I'll drop my frame delay as well. So both of those should have a nice effect. So I'm still getting just a tiny bit of follow through, but that's what I want. I don't, I don't want it to bend so it looks totally bendy. I want it to look like there's a locked joint there. Okay, now I have these keyframes. I want them to have the same ease. So I'm gonna select all of them at once and press F9 to create ease on my keyframes there. And cool, and I get this nice kind of flowy overlapping action to my arm swing. Okay, now let's do the back arm. I'm going to open up its rotation property by, by pressing R on my keyboard but now I'm only gonna create one keyframe. And the reason for that is I want this back arm to be driven by this front arm as well. So we'll have all of our keyframes on just one layer for uh, the arm swing. And uh, be, I, I need to create that one keyframe just so I can create a, a overlapping action on just my back arm here. So I'll select my shoulder and then shift select the rest of the um, bones and click on overlap and now if I go into my properties I'm gonna keep everything the same except since this is on the right hand side I'm gonna go with red as my colors so I'll do red and then pink and then click on OK and now I'm gonna hide my head layer so we can see what's going on and uh, there's no animation yet I have to actually overlap the two drivers. So if I select my front shoulder and then the back shoulder and then click on overlap, it's gonna give me the properties that were keyframed on this front shoulder uh, driver. And it's giving me this these effects as well as this transform rotation because both of these driver layers have this same rotation offset control and that was created by just having that offset control checked so for this overlap because they already have controls and uh, I really just want them to kind of see one another in expressions so I'm going to actually turn these off I don't need them recolored or anything like that uh, I'll just click on 
okay, and now the back arm is overlapping the front arm. So that's good, but I actually want it to be phase uh, shifted so it's actually going the at a different um, cycle than the front arm. Okay, so the way I'm gonna do that is by first, the frame delay for this back shoulder is five and this one's three. So a good way to just get these to always kind of be the same is I'm gonna select my front shoulder, lock the effect controls here, and then go to my back shoulder and open up its frame delay. And then I'm gonna hold down Alt Option and click on the stopwatch, which is gonna create an expression. And now I can drag this pick whip to this slider here, and it's gonna see this uh, front shoulder bone, and it's gonna reference its frame delay. So now if I click off of the expression, you can see it, gets, it snaps to three, and these will always be the same now. So it's good to just uh, get that set up if you're gonna create a overlap like this. Now I just want to uh, phase the two arms and I can do that with this button here. This is the uh, phase shift button and if I click on my properties that were uh, overlapped, so it was rotation and I'll click on the phase button and you can see it swings it back. And then I also need to do that for my rotation offset. If I then zoom out here and play my animation, you can see both arms now have this really smooth overlap and follow through. And those are all being created, all that overlap is being created by this driver layers four keyframes. So it's really powerful stuff and it allows you to make changes uh, quite easily that are reflected in all of the different bones. So if I was to for, say for example, twist this arm up higher, you can see now the back arm's doing it as well. So really cool. And then also uh, it's great for if maybe we wanted to retime this, maybe we wanted these to take longer for some reason. I, um, yeah, you just get so much control um, with just a few keyframes. So, uh, and, and you're not having to maintain them for every one of these uh, bones. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at creating overlap for our character's antenna, which we'll rig with inverse kinematics. In this lesson, we'll create an IK for our antenna, attach it to the character, and then overlap the bouncing kind of antenna ball along with the character's walk. So uh, we'll do that by starting the same way we did last time, and that's selecting what we want to bend, which is the in this case the antenna's wire, and then we create puppet pins. So I'm gonna create three puppet pins, one at the top, one at the middle, and then one at the base. Then I'm gonna open up the effects and go into the puppet pins and rename them the same way I did last time. So I'll call this antenna base, antenna mid, and then antenna top, okay? And now I'm going to use a tweak again to create bones. So I have my antenna top selected and now antenna mid and antenna base, okay? Now I'm going to uh, create a child to parent relationship by dragging the pick whip from the top to the mid and then the mid to the base. So the top is a child of the mid and then the mid's a child of the base. I'm then gonna choose my top uh, bone here and then create a controller, which will be what we're gonna use to drive our IK. 
I'm then going to uh, select the base and the controller and let's move, well actually let me undo that. I wanna make the ball a child of the controller. Okay, so now I'll select the base and the top again and I'm gonna drag this over into location. And of course those other bones are children of these bones so they're moving with them. So, okay. And just to get to match that, um, well first, yeah, that's, that's fine. I was gonna say we could uh, uh, make these children of the head and then zero out the rotation just so they would have that same kind of tilt to them that the, um, the other, or the head has. But I'm now dragging the uh, controller into position. It, it, whenever I rotated it, it got a little out of place, so. Okay, now I'm actually gonna um, remove the parenting for the controller. I just wanted to do that just to get it um, rotated. And now I'm going to select these in order of um, their hierarchy. So I wanna go with the top first, then the mid, then the base, and then finally the controller. And I'll click on IK. Now it's gonna give us some options here. I wanna choose this one because that's how I want it to bend. Um, it's, I think, uh, clockwise and counterclockwise. And then uh, for controllers, FK controllers with the IK, I don't need that, so I'll uncheck it. And then I'll click on OK. Now, if I select this antenna top and were to drag it, you can see it's getting a nice bend to it, which is what I want. And I want to have that bending along with my character steps. So it's uh, just one more step, which is uh, selecting the head, then the controller, and then overlapping them. So I'm gonna leave all those properties on and then go into the preferences. And the only thing I need to check here is maintain original. And what that's gonna do is if I didn't have that checked, it would uh, snap this controller to the anchor point, which is uh, uh, what it does by default. If I have maintain original checked, it, it uh, respects this relationship. So I'll click on okay. And if I scrub along here, you can see that I'm, it's bouncing along with my character's steps. So that's cool. Um, one thing about it though is I don't want it to necessarily straighten out completely. Um, I want it to like maintain a little bit of a bend. If, if you've ever had to work with uh, knee or walk cycles before and knee pops and things like that, those straights can be what really draw a little bit too much attention to your uh, bending objects. So. I'm going to go to one of the straight extremes, which is about there, and kind of drag oh, just the controller and drag it down until there's just the slightest bend there. And then because it has maintain original on the anime, I don't need to worry about keyframes or anything like that. It, um, that overlapping relationship keeps the animation happening. So now let's see what that looks like. Okay, now we're getting some nice overlapping action and follow through with our character's antenna as well as the arms. And that is how you use overlap with character rigs in After Effects. Thanks for watching.